So let me just give you a quick summary on what we have been doing the past uh, three Fridays. First, the first Friday we did this was when Pastor JP shared to us the biblical definition of work, right? Who among you here were in session one? Task of mine. Man, I session one. All right. So you learned that when God's people find meaning or purpose in life, that's when they start working cheerfully with the right attitude and accept their situation where God's will is. Because most of us, most of us here in this room right now, or not, not, probably not most of us, but a lot of us here are in a place where we're not actually happy. We are at that workplace where we think working is a drudgery, where working is a challenge, where we have to drag our feet every week or every morning when we're going to work. And I pray that for those of you who have that type of perspective, you will understand that the reason why you're in that position, the reason why you sometimes need to drag your feet every single day, is not because of the external situation. Primarily, it's being driven by the internal perspective that you have for work. That's why it's very crucial. When you define work, you need to understand that it's purpose. What is the purpose of the Lord putting you there? It is the hand of the Lord putting you there and allowing you to actually prioritize Him. And I recall, I remembered one saying of Pastor JP in session one when he said, be a number one by being number two. Do you remember that? Be a number one by being number two. That means if you focus not on yourself, but you focus on the Lord, the biblical meaning of work in you and in your career takes a new perspective. But we also know that working is not easy. That's why in the second session, a guy spoke about being having grace at work. And we've talked about handling pressures, pressures that produce stress in the workplace. And we've also learned, sino rito na sa session number two? Session two, task kamay. Okay, for those of you that are here in session, we're here in session two, learn that stress, stress is a byproduct of our perspective on our current situation. Diba? Naalala mo yun? Pag-usapan natin. That it's the interaction between the situation and the individual. Pag yung tao, tinitignan yung person yung external niya at tingin na hindi niya makaya yung external niya, nasa stress siya. And that's what produces stress. But we all realize that pressures at the workplace will continue. Hindi mawawala ang pressure in the workplace. Hindi mawawala yan. And sometimes, most of us avoid pressures. And in the, in, in the manner of avoiding the, the pressures, we add more stress into our lives. So, hindi po yun ang kasagutan. Ang kasagutan is have the right perspective. And, right, the, and the right, have the right perspective is called what? Peace. Nalala niya ba? Peace? Peace? Nalala niya ba? Ano yung peace? Ano yung acronym ng peace? Ano yung P? Purpose. Right? Sino kakasabi sa akin ng P-E-A-C-E? May price sa akin. Meron ba dito nakakaalala? Wala. P, please God. E, encourage one another. A, assume responsibility. C, contentment. And E, have the eternal perspective. Naalala niyo ba yun? Praise God. All right. Last week, we've talked about, Pastor Ricky talked about the failures. Ano yung mga nangyayari sa ating sa workplace? And most often than not, more often than not, if we do not have, again, the right perspective through failures at the workplace, nagiging discouragement siya. And last week, we've talked about that that failures are inevitable. And, but we all realize that if you have the right perspective again, again, it all starts from perspective, which is from God, we know that we, should, we can trust the process, that God can work through the failures that you're currently going into. That's why, kung titignan natin, kung meron tayong apat na words to describe ano po yung ginagawa natin dito sa series ito, ng work redefined, is the four Ps. Number one, first, session one, we talked about our purpose. Session number two, we talked about the perspective. And we talked about perspective. Session number three, we talked about the process. Meaning, if you truly follow that you have a perspective, uh, that you have the purpose, and you have the right perspective on these challenges into our lives, then you will understand that there is palang proseso. At tung proseso siya nato, dinadaanan yung karamihan siya nyo, if not all, you under, need to understand this process. Because if you understand the process, it will take you to the fourth and final stage, which is tonight. And the fourth and final stage is what we call practice. How do we practice? So from purpose to perspective to process and now to practice. At ayam po ang ating message for tonight. You need to find that sweet spot. What does the sweet spot mean? Sweet spot is simple. Ito po yung sabi ng sweet spot. A sweet spot is a place 
where a combination of factors would result in a maximum response for a given effort. Maximum response for a given effort. Yan po ang sweet spot. Yan po, ginagamit po yung term na yan sa badminton, sa tennis, any racket sports. In fact, tingin ko sa marami rito ang hindi masyado nakakitindi ng ano ibig sabihin ng sweet spot. So, I would demonstrate that to you live. Okay? Meron pala ako dito ang badminton eh. Sakto. Okay? So, ito po ang ibig sabihin ng sweet spot. Okay? Ang sweet spot is pag tumama, by the way, taga ko na hindi nagbabad yun ito, na? Daw na pag-practice kanina, so kailangan tama, tama ko ito ng tama. Pag tinama mo yung, 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 yung shuttlecock sa gitna ng raketa, hindi mo kailangan masyado malakas, malayong puputahan ng raket ng bola. Parang ganon. Hindi mo kailangan lakasan, di ba? Malakas, kahit malakas yung punta, kahit mahina yung tama. Why? Why? Because it's maximum impact to the effort that you're doing. But if you're not using your sweet spot, karamihan ng tao, ganito maglaro. Palo ng palo, lakas ng palo, pero walang punta yung bola. Walang punta yung shuttlecock. Why? Because hindi tinatama yung sweet spot eh. Kaya tayo, para tayo maging import, para tayo magkaroon ng maximum impact sa practice in the workplace, you need to practice sweet spot. Sweet spot. But what does that mean? Ano ba yung sabihin ng sweet spot sa ating, gina- ating ginagawa? Okay? Number one, we have God-given talents. Like there, we have God-given talents. What are the God-given talents? Lahat kayo, meron kayong mga talent. Okay? Pakisabi nga rin sa tao, katabi, katabi mo, meron kang talent, sabihin mo. Meron kang talent, sa katabi mo. Okay? Sabihin mo, may talent ka. Okay? Alright. Okay? Okay? Now, now, sabihin mo, gamitin mo. Gamitin mo. Gamitin mo. Okay? Alright. Now, after that, from God-given talents, whatever your God-given talents are, you now have your own experience. Very unique experience. May pinagdaanan ka. For example, for example, sa opisina mga yun, may pinagdaanan ka, saksakan ng hirap. Yung experience na yun, oh, ba't natatawa? Marami ang tatatawa. Pag dinadaanan mo yung mahirap na yun sa opisina, that actually builds on your sweet spot. I'll, I'll explain to you a little bit more. The third part is training. Meron kang training na ginagawa. Ano yung training mo? Doon sa opisina mo eh, may current training ka. Maximize mo yun for your sweet spot. And then finally, skills. Skills. Tapos, pag kinuha mo yung God-given talents, kinuha mo yung training, skills, and experiences, yung third part ng circle is called your passion. What are you passionate about? Bigyan ko yung example. Yung mag-ano lang ako ng konti sa sarili ko. Konti lang, okay? Yung God-given talent ko, medyo meron akong God has blessed me with a creative eye. Creative eye. So, I know or I, I, I appreciate certain things in a way that uh, is easy for me to understand. Meron akong creative eye. Second, yung experience ko, yung training ko, yung trabaho ko, were all brought about through marketing, creative communication, audiovisual presentation, all of these things. For 17 years, yun ang ginagawa ko. And then, yung passion ko talaga is photography. One of my passion is photography and video taking. So, ginawa ko ngayon, yung God-given talent sa akin ng creativity, yung trainings ko, experience ko, and challenges ko, at yung passion ko, yung sa gitna nun, is what you call the sweet spot. Kapag yung tatlong yan, naghalo-halo na, God-given talent, experience, training skills, at yung passion mo, in the middle of that, is your sweet spot. And now all of you have your own sweet spot. Now the key is, how do you discover that? Because, remember, you need to discover it. Why? So that the maximum effort that you're doing for the Lord, basing in your own purpose, will give you maximum response and maximum result. Did you notice that there are other people who are not able to do what they are doing? Did you see that? Kaya nang gano'n ng energy, gano'n diretso-retso ang ginagawa, laging masaya sa gustong gawin, laging interesado sa opisina, laging gusto pumasok. Bakit? Kasi yun ang sweet spot eh. May ibang-ibang tao, like for example, may ibang-ibang tao, gusto gusto mag-compute. Meron ba kayo kailangan gano'n, galing mag-compute? Buong gabi, magko-compute. Okay lang sa kanila. Ako, I'm the person I would never compute. I'm the person, sabi mo sa akin magkano, babayaran ko. Hindi ako magko-compute. Hindi ko sweet spot yun eh. Pero pagawan mo ako ng isang video, pa-photograph, pa-picturean mo ako sa saksakan ng layong kahit walong oras na makakapagod, 
Gagawin ko yun. In fact, after ko eight hours, di pa ako pagod eh. Gusto ko pa. Why? Because that's my sweet spot. Now, the key is you need to discover that sweet spot. Because we're wasting our talents. We're wasting our energy. We're wasting the opportunity if we're not focusing on our sweet spot. But the key in the middle of that equation is what is God has called you to do. Yun yung sweet spot. In the next 40 minutes, we will be talking about what that means. And I'm going to talk to you about three spiritual truths. And this spiritual truth is foundational in our perspective on how to address your current situation in the workplace today. Three biblical truths I want to talk to you about. We're, not going to go, we're now going to go into the, into, the, into the Bible verses. And one of the things that we try to practice or we try to apply is that when we read the Bible verses, we give it the respect that it deserves. So when, we never, when you're here on Big Friday, it's one of the things that we keep on sharing with people is that the privilege to hear God's Word and to, to speak God's Word is a privilege. That's why when you're asked to read Bible verses, you read it with your heart. And you read it with a desire to worship the Lord by reading. So I'm going to read, we're going to read about 12 verses for tonight. And so is it okay if we all stand up and read these 12 verses in Matthew chapter 25? By the way, if you have your Bible, open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 25, okay? Shall we read verse 14? One, two, three, go. Again, it will be like a man... The man who had received the five talents. So also the one who had two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See? I've gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. With a few things, I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Verse 22. Also, the man who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more. Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man. So I was afraid. See, here is what belongs to you. Verse 26. Finally, verse 28. For everyone who has been will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Father God, O Lord Jesus, we seek you. We want to hear you. We want you, through your amazing gift and power, through your Holy Spirit, transform us, change our hearts, renew our mind, Lord Jesus. And as we dig deep into these verses, we pray that it will just not only amplify these principles, but would really be indebted, will be really be planted into our hearts until we could really apply it into our lives. Father, we commit to you this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Three things. Thank you. Sit down. Three things I want to share to you quickly. First, the parable talks about an amazing principle. 
the, the parable talks about three major principles that I would share to you that would guide each one of us as we navigate through the narrative that you all are trying to write when it comes to your workplace career. Okay? Kailan natin maintindihan, ano ba sinasabi nito parable na to at paano ba ito ma-apply sa buhay natin? Number one, unang-una, kailan natin maintindihan that we have a master who provides gifts. Okay? Say that with me. Master of the gift. Master of the gift. What does that mean? It means that it dawns upon all of these people, the three servants, the three slaves, the three men, that there is an unbelievable opportunity. It is an unprecedented act of generosity and trust that the master has been given these three gentlemen. It is a chance of a lifetime. But kasi nabing chance of a lifetime, it means it's a defining moment in their lives. Bakit ko sinasabi yan? Ang ibig po sa kalbihin ng the word talent, in biblical times, the word talent is, is tantamount to about 15 to about 20 years. No one knows exactly. So marami pong, marami pong nagsasabing scholar. Pero normally, it's between 15 years to 20 years of cumulated Salary. Let me repeat. One talent is equal to about 15 to 20 years of wages. So, ikaw, slave ka. And by the way, the slaves during that time, they don't have bank account. Wala silang savings. They live day to day. And so, for them to be able to be given this amazing opportunity and chance of a lifetime, you need to understand the mindset of the slaves as they have gotten this news from their amazing, generous master. Imagine mo yun? Yung isa, ilang talent na binigay? Five. So pag kinumpit mo yun, milyong-milyong pera ang binigay sa kanila. So in short, this is an amazing opportunity and chance of a lifetime. Why do I set that apart? Why do I put that in the foundation, brothers and sisters, in this context of work in progress? Because a lot of you, you're... You're going with the flow on what you're doing in your workplace. And you're failing to realize the opportunity that is in front of you on this opportunity to really be amazingly, exceedingly purposeful on where the Lord has placed you. I wouldn't be surprised if most of us here in this room, we look at our workplace as a place where we could earn money. I wouldn't be surprised. But... Come to think of it, if God created all of us, come to think of it, if God created all of us and He loves us more than we can ever imagine, can you imagine, just follow me with this chain of thought? He created us, He loves us far more than we can imagine, and then He allows us to spend 70% of our waking up hours in the workplace, in the offices. Don't you think that He has something planned for you in that workplace? Kasi kung wala, all of those 70% that you're going to spend in your lifetime doing your career will be all for naught, will be nothing if you fail to understand what the purpose is at that place. Kaya important thing, iset asa simula yun eh. Na itong tatlong to, is there anyone here who doesn't understand Tagalog? So it's important that we set this up in a nice way because it will dawn upon them that this is a chance of a lifetime. And you all who are here, you need to hear this. Because perhaps you're wasting it. Perhaps you're missing the opportunity. Look. Look at verse. Look here. To one, he gave five talents. The two, he gave one talent. And the rest, according to his ability. So there's a five, there's a two, and there's a one. And one of the things I want to explain to you quickly here is that the master provided each according to his ability. Why? Why did that component have to be inputted in the first two verses of this amazing parable? Why? What is the lesson? What is the lesson that the parable is teaching us? Most of us overlook this second half. Eh. Most of us, we just came through this. Titignan ka lang natin lagi is, binigyan ng five, binigyan ng two, binigyan ng isa. But I underline specifically, each according to his ability. Why? Because the master understood that the one talent servant was not capable as much as the five talent servant. He knew, the master knew that there will be people that are a five talent guy. 
There will be, a, there will be some who will be a two-talent guy, and there will be a, someone who will be a one-talent guy. So one of the things that you need to f- understand right away is that, alin ba ako dyan? Sa five, sa two, sa one. Pero mas importante is hindi ka ba five, hindi ka ba two, hindi ka ba one. Hindi po yun ang importante. Ah, kahit one ka, okay yun. Ang importante is, ano yung ginagawa mo sa one? What are you doing with what has been given to you? Look at verse 16. The man who had received the five talents went at once, at once, at once. Ano yung na at once? Went at once. Most of us, when we read this at once, we think na, what's Tagalog ang at once? What's the Tagalog in at once? Kaagad, right? Ngayon na, right? Now na, right? Ganun na, di ba? Ngayon na, now na. No, 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 no. Hindi po ibig sabihin nun, nung, nung original word na to, hindi po yun ang ibig sabihin nun. It's not the chronological timing. It's the realization. The slave realizes at once na, na Tagalog nang na-realize. Na, ha? Na pagtanto, dalim, di na pa, na intindihan, na na realize niya, tagalog yun, na realize niya, na realize niya, na meron siyang opportunity, na winnie waste, na realize niya, na meron siyang bigyan na opportunity ng master niya. That's why at once, meaning at once, he did something about it. And folks, it has not to be rocket science for you to understand that. This is a parable where everyone is given a gift. Everyone. And if parables mirror our life here on earth, it also follows that all of you here have your own talent. Lahat po tayo may talent. Yun lang nga, iba mas marami, iba mas konti. For example ako, hindi ako kahit kailan pwede kumanta. I mean, kahit anong gawin ko, kahit anong tindi ng practice ko, magiging sintunado ako. Pero magluno ako makinig. Alam ko pag sintunado yung tao, alam ko pag nami-miss ng, 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 ng chords yung gitara or whatever, but I cannot, I cannot really sing it because I do not have that talent. And if I'm gonna beat myself up saying, why cannot I not I sing? Bakit di ako pwede kumanta? Bakit di ako kumanta? Bakit di kumanta? Can you imagine the lost opportunity that I will be spending trying to sing and sing and sing because even though I don't have the talent, sayang yung oras. Sayang. But, but, but ulitin ko lang, kaklaruhin ko lang, ha? yung mga iba dito nagpa-persevere, okay lang yun. Right? Okay din yun. Ibang, ibang Bible study yun. Pero, <laughs> ngayon na sinasabi lang natin tonight is this. That what we're trying to say is this. The sweet spot has to work in such a way that you understand what your giftings are. In all humility, understand where you're strong, where you're weak. In the great pecking order of life, we understand that there will be people who will, five, will have five talents more than us. And there will be people that will be like us. And there will also be people below us in terms of talents. That's why we need to understand the diversity of the talents that the Lord bestows upon His people. So, what's the application to the first part of the master of the gift? Here's the application. First, you could really, really complain why isa lang ang talent mo. Pwede mong gawin yun. Or meron kang five talents, pero dalawang talent lang ang ginagamit mo. Or number three, you find out and accept what your talents are, what your giftings are, what your passions are, what your trainings are, what your experiences are. And then from there, from tonight, start, losing, start working and using those talents for the purpose that the Lord bestowed upon you. And he, look, he divided. Look, uh, look what happened. So the one with the two talents gained two more. Immediately, the five talents guy worked, and so did the second talent guy work. But the third guy, look at in verse 18. But the man who had received the one talent, what happened? Went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Bakit? Why did he do that? Why did he hid his master's money? Later on, we're going to talk about that. But first thing we need to realize this. When the master assigned five to one, he was assigning based on what? Their ability. Bakit important yun? Why is that an important understanding of who our master is? That our master gives us 
abilities according, talents according to our ability. But important yan. So that, so that, listen to me, so that you cannot complain. Now, why is the master expecting more from you? The master is expecting exactly according to your ability. Kaya if you're not hitting what the master is asking you to do, you don't have any excuse. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, ay hindi, kasi two talent lang ako, yung five talent ang binigay mo sa akin eh. Yung mga pinapagawa mong five talent, hindi ko kaya yun kasi two talent lang ako. Walang ganun. And it provides a backdrop on a lot of our understanding in this room. Because a lot of us here thinks that we're so overworked. A lot of the people here thinks that we're so stretched. Stretch na stretch na ako. Dano bang gagawin? Hindi ko na kaya to. But if we look back to what is the definition of how the master of the gift provides the gift, alinaw, klaro, ibibigay yung talent dun sa kakayahan ng isang tao, gamitin yung talent na yun. At yun din ay expectation sa'yo. So kung andito ka, at one talent person ka, okay lang, kasi ang expectation sa'yo, yung one talent lang. Mas kakabahan ako, kung five talent person ako, tas ang ginagawa ko, pang one talent person lang. And a lot of us, are like that. A lot of us here in this room, are five talent people, groping for the result, of a one talent person. Wasted opportunity. Sayang. Sayang. That's why this message is for all of us because we need to understand that, look, the last person, the guy who had the least amount of talent, siya pa yung nagtago. Di ba? Di ba ba inisip? Bakit ganun? Bakit hindi yung five talent ang nag- walang ginawa? Bakit yung one talent ang walang ginawa? He hid the money into and hid his master's money. Why? Why? That provides for us the second point I want to share to you tonight. First, we have a master of the gift. Second, we have a master of the settled account. What does that mean, master of a settled account? You see, most of us here in this room, we never try to understand the consequences of not doing what we're supposed to do. Why? Because nowadays, we, we have so many ways to circumvent and to move around consequences. For example, oh, ano nangyari? Ba't di mo na-submit? Sorry, sorry, di ko na-submit eh. Nakalimutan ko, bawi ako, bawi ako. And because we all want to say, okay, sige, bawi ka na lang, and then forget about it. And then all of a sudden, you see that the occurrences of these things happening over and over again. Why? Because a lot of us do not now have the concept of consequences. Kids. Kids nowadays sa school. Bawal na paluin. Diba? Bawal pagalitan. Why? Pag pinagalitan, pag pinalo, ang mangyayari. Pag nangyari na, magsusumbong, susumbong yung, yung, yung teacher sa, 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 sa uh, school, and then we'll have, the teacher will have more consequences. So what are we teaching the kids now? We're teaching the kids now, you can do anything and there will be no consequences. And that's why we grow up with all of us here having no idea of consequences. Nahuli ka ng MMDA, ano nangyari? Sir, may meeting ako kay Kernel. Ito po yung card ko. You could worm everything out. Sir, tapos na po yung dead time, nagang 5 o'clock, nanda ko naman, kuya, pwede mo na ma-stretch yan. 5.35 pa lang naman eh. Then Filipinas, then okay, give in. And all of this cultural baggage that we brought about silences the nerves of consequences in our life. Kaya lahat ng tao ngayon, hindi naniniwala sa consequences. But I tell you this, the Bible says, there will be an accounting. Tatanungin tayo. Tatanungin tayo, ano ang ginawa mo sa talent mo? And the person who has no heart for what the Lord wants them to do, will not use his talent for the Lord. Kaya yung third person, tinago eh. Bakit? Because that person did not have the heart for his master. And you will find that that in a bit further on, later on. Look, after a long time, in verse 19, by the way, a long time, magkakasingin lang po, mga kapatid. After a long time. Hindi ka tulad sa atin, di ba? We know that year-end, merong evaluation, di ba? Year-end, 
we know that at the year end, may evaluation. Eh. So we know. But this guy, our ma- this master, you won't know what time he's going to come back. And obviously, the context, the biblical context of this story revolves around the re- second return of Jesus Christ. Again, something that we never or we seldom talk about in church, specifically in Big Fridays. But it's the reality. It's going to happen. And the question here is here. The question is here. Talent, the using of talent, is not the means for salvation. It's not the means to earn righteousness. The usage of the talent pertains to the stewardship, the responsibility of what we have for what the Lord has given us. The man who had received the five talents bought the other five. Look at what he said. Master, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. What did the master reply? What did the, how did the master reply? Well done, good and faithful servant. Tignan mo lang yan. Parehong pareho. Well done, good and faithful servant. Parehong pareho is the same reaction that the master gives to the guy who made five and to the guy who made two. Why? Because the master is not concerned about the result. The master is concerned about how the person used to get that result. It depends on what we have, the ability. So, ang expectation ko sa iyo, iba sa expectation ko sa kanya. Ang expectation ko sa iyo, iba sa expectation ko sa kanya. Bakit? Kasi iba-iba kayong tao. And that was what the master is saying to us. I would have the same joy in my heart. I would have the same attitude in my heart. I would have the same happiness in my heart, even if you get five or two. But the key is that you did what you are supposed to do. So let me ask you this. What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? Look, look, also, the one who had received the two talents, pareho, pareho, same thing. Master, I've gained two talents, the same reply. Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy, enter into the joy of your master. Look, let's just dissect this for a bit. Look at how the reward is explained. Look at how the reward is explained. Enter into the joy of your master. The reward is that when the slaves provide joy to the master. Ngayon, baliktad. We want our joy regardless if the master is enjoying or not. Why? Because the idea that we all live into is that it's about me. Me. Kaya sa workplace, ganun po ang nangyayari. Kasi a lot of us, we only think about ourselves. We never think about the company or some think about the company. Worse, we don't even think about our boss. One, of, one early corporate rule I, in, I embraced when I was working in the corporate, I was still working in corporate is this. Always, always, make your boss look good. Always. Nastik sa utak ko yun. Always make your boss look good. Kaya kahit ako yung nakatrabaho, siya pa rin yung, siya pa rin yung, ano, yung credit. Para nagtatanong, oh, Ikoy, that's a good job. Oh, sir, I was really guided. I was really mentored. I was really helped as well out by my boss. Kahit di, ako, kahit di masyado ang tinulungan ng boss ko. But when the boss hears that itong taong to, ang desire itong taong ko to is really to make me feel good and make me look good, guess how the boss will treat the employee? Guess. Take a wild guess. Pababayaan ka ba nun? Iiwanan ka ba nun? In fact, igugroom ka nun. Igugroom ka nun. Kasi habang gumagaling ka, habang tumataas ka, tumataas siya. Gumagaling siya. Because he sees that you're after his joy. And if you don't have that perspective, ano nga gawin mo? Pababayaan mo yung boss mo. Iba yung tingin mo sa kanya. Aasarin mo siya. Hindi ka susunod sa kanya. In fact, iiwanan mo siya. Dati, ngayon, tutuwa nga ako eh, dati, pag ang boss, umalis ng alas 8 ng gabi, yung, yung, yung staff, hindi aalis ng 7.30. Aalis ng 8.05. Ngayon, hindi na. 6 o'clock, alis na. I mean, I'm not saying na ginagawa niyo yun. I'm just saying that uh, nakikita ko lang sa, hindi, hindi ko rin nakikita sa center yun, sa CCA, but I see it oftentimes in my friends because nawawala na yung discarte about what do you mean when you want to enter the joy of the master. Folks, you want to have a different perspective in your workplace, 
try to see how you could really provide the joy of your master. Folks, at the end of the day, first, master of the gift. Second, the master of what? Set of the accounts. And the second point on the master of second accounts is this. This is what you will be asked. What did you do with what I have given you? You know, our CEO, the Lord, our chief executive officer, si Big Boss, nasa taas, sa dun, sa langit, he will not ask you, Ikoy, ano yung ginama mo dun sa binigay ko kay Jay? O kay John? O kaya kay David? O kaya kay Mark? He will not ask me what he have given those people. He will ask me, ano yung ginama mo sa binigay ko sa'yo? Eh tayo, how do we see things at the workplace? How do we do things in the workplace? Bakit siya ganun? Why is she getting all the promotion? Why is she getting all of those? Why is she lagging sa ibang tao? It's wrong. Because at the end of the day, at the settling of the accounts, they will ask you. That's why I always ask myself, have I given everything? That's why a lot of people, you know, when they see me, they see me as a very passionate, uh, very gung-ho person, I'm sorry, I don't know anything else. Eh? Because I'm afraid when the Lord asks me, Ikoy, what did you do with the responsibility I've given you? Sweet spot is something that you would really dictate. And by the way, by the way, you trabaho mo, platform lang yun, in fulfilling God's purpose. The work itself is not the everything, it's not the end. The work is a platform to accomplish what the Lord wants you to do. Let me give an example. Anybody here a Golden State Warriors fan? Meron ba dito Golden State Warriors fan? Meron ba dito ang Cleveland fans? May Cleveland fans ba dito? Dalawa lang yata kami, ang Cleveland fans dito. Cleveland ako. But let me share to you, let me share to you a clip, a clip that I saw on the internet that caught my attention. It's a two-minute clip, but it's, it caught my attention about something about sweet spot in the workplace. Let me show it to you this, this video. Ay, diyan, 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 diyan. Sorry, sorry. My video, my video. Mamaya pa yan. That video. Video? Yeah. Okay. Video? Yon, please. Welcome to Raucous Oakland, where the Golden State Warriors are champions for 2017. Kevin Durant, he is your NBA Finals MVP. The Dubs have won their second in three years. For Durant, his first so obviously, title this is the ever. awarding, tonight, this ceremony, but you need to understand, bear with me, it's going to come here. Beginning here in Oakland, California. First time this franchise has ever won a championship on their home. Well, there, there you see the okay, scene so they're, inside. They're now celebrating. The Warriors locker room. Uh, players the players start players to make their way the room. The champagne. They're now pop, going to State celebrate Warriors with champagne. Such a basketball team, Matt. And it was such a dichotomy of styles in the finals. Here, the dream comes true as scripted. He walks away as not only a champion, but the finals MVP. And Matt, this win here, this championship for Golden State, it validates in getting the MVP. But the... Uh, is just big star player, and I'll say this to Steph Prince Curry, is still outside the of the locker room. A lot of old years, so and now everybody is celebrating inside the, the locker room, but Steph but Curry is still outside, this, right? So agree. Steph Curry would now go into the locker room and see what happens. Play. It was easier. He, he didn't have to work as hard. He didn't have to exert as much effort and was more efficient, and that was obviously on display, especially here in the finals. Is there something, Smitty, to be said, though, that Kevin Durant came to Golden State, do what he did in the finals? To rack up those kind of numbers, I think that's now, where the validation Steph Curry is making his way down to the dugout. In the he will now enter the celebration. The biggest, and he had a great season, a great regular season. Had to come back from a knee injury. They had the Golden State Warriors medical staff very skeptical if he could even return. And what kind of form would that be? But Smitty, to come here and business, to step aside, a guy like Steph Curry, who I don't think is well, the for being a two-time MVP and saying, you know what? Kevin Durant, I want you to thrive. I want you to come in and be a part of this. I want you to be at your best because I know that gives us so the best opportunity in, to win. Look at what happened. see that happen a lot, Smitty, where an MVP steps aside for another MVP and makes him feel welcome. Not saying it was all on Steph, 
but really the ego of being that MVP star type player and allowing Kevin Durant to flourish. So it just speaks to what you said of the character that exists in that locker room. Can I have that video again? Just so I can show you what happened. This is the last part. Eh. Bago, bago sila magsalita, bago sila magsalita, ingay-ingay ng announcer. Eh. Nangyari, yun. Bago siya nagsimula, the announcer was talkative, non-stop commentating. But all of a sudden, when Steph started praying, even the announcer on live television, on nationwide, global television, tapasin niyo ba yan? They all became silent. Why? Because that is the platform. That's the platform. Basketball is a means. At the end of the day, it's about, it's about Steph's purpose, which really, his purpose there in that ball game is to really gather the entire Warriors. By the way, the entire team, yun, ha? the entire Warriors team, come to a point of praying. And can you imagine, bago siya dumating doon, everybody was shouting, everybody was throwing champagne. But when he came in, and Andre Iguodala, the other guy who said, let's pray, is also the leader. Andre Iguodala is a one-talent guy compared to the five-talent guy of Kevin Durant. By the way, I'm talking basketball. So, baka hindi niyo naiintindihan yung mga ibang angle. Pakwetin niyo lang kayo mamaya sa breakout niyo. But, but, but can you imagine Andre Iguodala, a one-talent guy, goes out and says, Steph, let's pray. Gathered everyone, and then when Steph started praying, everybody was just quiet. And when I was seeing that in, in the internet, it just encouraged me so much that even in a place where prayer is totally discouraged, in the United States where really there's a backlash about Christianity, here we are, the world champions, celebrating in the top of their game and thanking the Lord for what the Lord has done through them. Now I tell you, that's the sweet spot. Hindi niya kailangan pagurin. Hindi niya kailangan mag, matinding gaya, ginagawa. It's that moment, that time, that the Holy Spirit came into them and spoke to them and used it. And I pray that visual, that image would reverberate to the countless of people who will watch that video and really understand, at the end of the day, what are you really doing for the Lord? What are you doing for the Lord? In your workplace, wherever you are, in your career, in your business, what is the purpose that the Lord wants to use on you? It's first. So you could do what is being asked of you. And then look, look, in verse 26, his master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. That's how the master called him. You knew that I harvest where I have not sown. By the way, let me just make sure I don't forget this. The reason, the reason of the third guy was that I was afraid, look, verse 25, I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. Why was he afraid? Because in verse 24, he said, I knew you are a hard man. There, are you following me? Sabi niya, look, look, oh, look at verse 24. The one who received the one talent said, Master, I knew that you are a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not gathered seed. So in verse 25, he said, So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent into the ground. See, here it belongs to you. And then the master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. What does that mean? What is the Bible trying to tell us? What is the, what is the story being trying to paint? First, for some of us, we think that it is true that the master is a hard man who's who is a who is a hard man? Because you know, explain nung ano nung sinasabi na third servant, di ba? You are a hard man. <coughs> Excuse me. But in verse 26, verse 26, when the master replied, he never said, he never admitted he was a hard man. Tangi tni ba yan? Look, verse 24, sabi niya, 
you are a hard man, right? Pero no verse 26, no nag-reply na yung master, hindi niya sinabing he's a hard man. You know why? Because he is not a hard man. No, no iota of evidence in this narrative tells that the master was a hard man. In fact, if he was a hard man, he would not have given anything back to the five and to the two talent person. So in short, what we fail to realize is that the third servant, the third servant was giving an excuse. He was giving an excuse, but at the end of the day, he really did not know the master. Do you, are, you, are you following me? Yun yung totoong reason kung bakit na tinago yung one, yung one uh, talent niya. First, he did, he did not know the master. And second, he was wicked and he was lazy. Lazy. Do you, know, do, you, do you understand the meaning of lazy? The definition of the meaning lazy means shrinking from accomplishing a task. You're shrinking from accomplishing a task. You know, we say lazy. So if that is the definition of lazy, shrinking from accomplishing a task, can that be a representation? Can that be a definition to some of us here in this room? I don't know. But if there's something that the Lord is asking you to do, or in fact, if something that you realize that your purpose in the workplace is true, truly to honor the Lord, then you're not doing anything to do that, then perhaps you're shrinking from doing what you're supposed to do. Or second, you don't really know the master. You really didn't know the master. And you also realize, well, naman ginawang masama yung third, third slave, di ba? He did not squander the money. He did not embezzle the money. He didn't give sa ibang bagay. In fact, buong buo pa yung pera, wala na wala, right? So I was thinking, why is, or what's the point why the master was so angry to the third servant? Eh, kompleto pa naman yung pera, binalik yung one talent. That's when we realize that the master was not angry because of the money that was gone. Obviously, the money was there. The master was angry because the slave missed the wonderful opportunity that the master has given him. Kaya siya asar. Sayang yung opportunity. Binigyan kita niyan, hindi mo ginamit. And so, tatakot ako minsan, sa sarili ko din minsan, baka may binibigay sa akin talent na hindi ko ginagamit. Or may binibigay sa akin opportunity na hindi ko minamaximize. Because the master of the settled accounts will come and he will ask us, what did you do to what I have been given you? And the third part, the third point, is that we have a master of the reward. Well done, good and faithful servant. Look, look at verse 28. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. Anong isabihin nun? Kinukuha yung ibang talent at binibigay sa iba. What's the cost for taking the talent out? What's the cost? Laziness. Inactivity. If you're not doing anything to what the Lord has given you, chances are he will take that and give it to someone else. Kaya like ko sinasabi, when I pray or when I talk to people in ministry, I always tell them, it is a privilege to be part of ministry. Bakit? Kasi may mga times na kahit wala naman tayo doon sa ministry na yun, tatakbo naman yung ministry. Tatakbo yun. We can, never, we can never stop God's movement. We can only be part of it. That's why here when they asked, take it away from him, the reason why the talent was taken away is because one, laziness, two, inactivity. Pag di mo ginagamit, aalisin sa'yo. Eh, but look, and here's the best part for me, the reward part. For everyone who has will be given more. And he will have what, everybody? He, what is the word there? Abundance. What a word. Do you know the word abundance? So ganda nan. Abundance is a word that is overflowing. Yung hindi mo nahihingin. You're not gonna even ask for it. It's there. That's what abundance means. And I see a lot of people struggling to even experience what abundance means. The key in having an abundant, successful life, if you're going to look at this verse, is what? Is what? Do what the Lord is asking you to do. He will give you the abundant life. And look, look, it's about, it's about 
It's about a game-changing scenario. Look at, look at there. For everyone who has will be given more. Will be given more. So, hindi ibig sabihin to, some of us kasi, when we look at work, like this, eh, we work for weekends. Alam mo ba working for weekends? Alam, alam niyo ba yan? Pagpapakapagod tayo ng Monday to Friday, ang mindset natin, pagkati na Sabado, ha, tapos na yung trabaho. Okay na. Pero pati na Monday, ganun ulit. Hindi niyo po napansin niyo, yung cycle. Monday to Friday, we will work hard. Pagkati na Friday night or Saturday, ha, sarap, wala ng trabaho. Saan di wala ng trabaho? Then pag, pag, pag Monday, trabaho na naman. It's a cycle. Why? Why, why is that a cycle? Why, why, why? Why is it a cycle? Why? Because we do not understand the principle of abundance. When you are given and you accomplish tasks, more will be given to you. Hindi sinabi, tinan mo, tinan mo yung master, tinan mo yung master, hindi sinabi ng master, okay, five talent, five talent servant, two talent servant, you did your best, pahinga na kayo. In fact, mag-spa kayo. Go to a spa. Uh, relax ka na for the rest of your life. You, you be sinabi ng master? No, no, no. The master look. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You're good. You'll get more. You'll get more from me. You'll get more responsibility from me. Now, for of us, for a lot of us here in this room, when we hear more responsibility, what do we do? <gasps> ako na naman. Iba naman. Iba naman na gumawa. But na lang ako lagi, boss. It's a I mean, shibo. Walang ginagawa. Ang game mo doon, no? Di ba ganun tayo, right? Look at the game-changing perspective of this, of this biblical principle. If you are doing what you're supposed to do, you will be given more. It doesn't make sense. Why is it giving more a reward? Why? Why is it giving more a reward? Why is more work a reward? Why is more responsibility a reward? How can that be? Unless you understand that at the end of the day, what the slave wants is to enter into the joy of the master. That's the reward, entering into the joy. Okay, you would look at work differently. Ah, may trabaho pa ba? Ako gagawa. Ah, may kailangan pa ba? Ako gagawa. Why? Because when you do those things and you accomplish what the Lord wants you to do in your workplace, in your career, in your job, in your family, in whatever you're doing, if you are doing what the Lord wants you to do, folks, the reward is you will enter into the joy of the master. Yun yung reward. Kaya you want more. Kasi you want to enjoy his presence more in your life. Kaya mo bago yung isip mo. Mo bago yung understanding mo what work is. If you have the right perspective, sweet spot. Let me, let me close this final part with a testimony on how I tried to practice doing this. Dito mama ron, sayang. Doing this. Mary, wala, marami pa ta. Lima na lang to. Oh, hindi na naman to mama. It's okay. Pao, don't worry. Meron pa apat dito. Before I went to full-time ministry, I was asking myself, Lord, how can I practice my sweet spot? Okay? Okay, you taught me to, to become a little bit, a little bit creative. My experience in my training, I have been trained. I have been trained in marketing. I have been trained in promotion. I have been trained in media for 15 years. So, ano yun? And then my passion is about promotion. My passion is about doing things, communicating things. That's my passion, Lord. What is my sweet spot? So I ask myself, Lord, as a brand marketing manager, what can I do in my work? How can I, how can I glorify your name? Then he shared through my heart, Ikoy. What are you doing in your workplace, in your job? Sa trabaho mo, ano ginagawa mo? Kinapakilala mo ba sa mga tao na anak kita? Kinapakilala mo ba yun? Pangalawa, di ba gusto mo magsimula ng Bible study sa opisina mo? You really want to start a Bible study in your workplace? What are you doing? And every time I ask people to, start a, to attend my Bible study, people are always asking me this funny question. I would invite them. Can you attend my, my Bible study every Monday at 7th uh, at floor? 7th floor pa yung office ko nun eh. And then the, pers- the, the person would tell me, Huh? Ano Bible study yan? Well, Bible study, you know, we just talk about for 30 minutes to share the Bible. Ano ba yan? Alive, alive ba yan? Yung tataas kamay, yung mga ganyan sabi sa akin, sabi ko, ah, ah, wala, wala, no, no, walang taas-taas kamay dito. It's a, uh, una-una, bawal, 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 bawal magkantahan sa, sa office ko that, no, no, nandun pa yung Bible study ko eh. So I realized, they have this wrong notion about Christianity. So I told them, I will expose them to Christians. 
they need to see that Christians are actually normal people. So, ang ginawa ko, because I'm in charge of doing advertising, oh, normal tayo, tinan mo tingin ko niya, normal tayo. Ang ginawa ko ngayon, instead of getting for models outside, I got models from the church. So, si Pastor Omar yan, batang-bata pa, si BJ Manalo, si George Padva, tsaka si Philip Rojas. Now, these were all my contemporaries before, and they were all Caltex models. So, I took, took them. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but may mga time na nasa Caltex pa ako, mayroon kami, lahat ng gas stations namin, puro CCF models ang nakalagay. So, when people were coming in, when, when my office mates started talking to them, when, when, when my people in my workplace interacted with these people, that's when they realized, oh, hindi naman pala, hindi naman pala bado yung mga Kristiyano. I mean, nanonood din pala sila ng TV, yung mga ganun na, kasi hindi nila alam, nakala nila, hindi nanonood ng TV, right? O nanonood din pala na sila ng sine. And then slowly but surely, it opened the doors. I now started inviting them to my Bible study. They realized that, hey, Bible study is not that bad. So I started my Bible study in the workplace. Grow, 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 grow. Then finally, I came to the biggest chunk, the biggest chunk of my sweet spot, I think, in, in, history, in my history in that workplace. Nagkaroon ako ng project. This is my project. I do commercials. Ang commercials nun, one commercial, seven different countries will do a commercial. So South Africa, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Thailand, Philippines, New Zealand, and Australia will all join one, uh, one, one commercial. We will make one commercial that will be shown in seven countries. Do, do you follow me? So they were waking. So yan yung, yung storyboard. So the sto- di, di nyo mabasa, but the storyboard means, buti nga, nakita ko itong original storyboard. The original storyboard, there's a, there's a band going to ride in a van, and there are going to be musicians who will clean their instruments because Tecron, the gasoline, cleans the engine. So the, 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 the principle was, when you clean your instruments, your instruments perform well. So going that, you see that in the car. So ito po yun. Ito po yung, ito po yung final. Sabi ko ngayon, sabi ko ngayon, Lord, this is an amazing opportunity. How can you use me to further your name? And a brilliant idea came to me. The head, or the lead actor of this, lead actress of this, uh, this commercial is a girl. So I said, what if, during that time, I was listening to, Chris, to I, I, my, my job was I go to different restaurants and bars in my, in my events, and I, come, I came across a girl, a Christian girl, who, who plays the guitar and sings well, and his, her name was Kichi Nadal. And so I asked myself, what if the lead actress of this commercial that would be shown for seven countries could be a Filipina and can be a Christian? Filipina. And so I prayed. I talked to people. And to cut the long story short, because I only have two minutes left, cut the long story short, she bagged the song. She bagged the, the award. I mean, she bagged the, 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 the spot. And that's why I think we cannot show the video now. Can we show the video? 30 seconds na naman to. Eh. This is the video. Okay, this is the video. The final, the final edit shown in different the countries. The kitchen perform best when clean. That's why you need the unbeatable cleaning power of Caltex with Tecron. Because when your engine performs at its best, so can you. I know five seconds na yung yung ano ni, ni Kichi, masyado may clear, di ba? Five seconds na. Kichi na dalba yun, parang ganun, five seconds na. But, but. <laughs> But here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. Wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses. Here's the thing. After we got Kitchi, she was in the middle of an album that she was coming up with. In the middle. And she said that I will make an album that will be all Christian songs. That was the time she went out of her shell of really becoming a solid Christian singer. So when she was undergoing that album, and we, I met her, we said, why don't we, Caltex, sponsor that album? And then you make a song for Caltex. And so, cut the long story short, she made a song, she made a song, okay, and then we had, uh, we had a MTV, uh, this, the director was Sherman So, she, he's also from CCF, by the way, all CCF, Castellan. Uh, 
<laughs> and then, and then that's kitschy, and then that's the song. But, but the thing, amazing thing here is that the song, original song, she made for Caltex, for the Tekron jingle, is this song. This is the lyrics, okay? Hindi natin kakantahin, but look at the lyrics. You are the highway, apart from you are roads downhill. You are the highest way, the truth, and the life. There is no other road for me. This is the verse of that song. It's John 14, 6. And so when my boss came to me and said, Bakit ganun yung kanta? Parang gospel. <laughs> Sabi ko, oh, oh, oh. And then here's the amazing thing. And, and, and then the boss, who is not a Christian, said, Pero maganda. <laughs> and we got it. That's the song. That was the song who was played over the radio. That was the song who had so many billboards. That was, we made radio tours. We, we spoke on the line. And one of the excerpts on that interview is the telling me, so, Ikoy, uh, what can you say about Techron? Except Techron's cleaning the engine, di ba? So I go, well, cleaning the engine is like cleaning the soul. It's really when you come to a point where you meet an ingredient that would change the complexion of your engine that's the crown, but in our case, our soul, there is an ingredient, and that ingredient is Jesus. And when He comes into our life, He will change us, He will clean us, and He will purify our soul. And when I said that on radio, alo sabi ng DJ, ng disc jock, sabi sa akin, Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, <laughs> but again, when I was sharing that, I, 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 never, I never wanted any attention, I just wanted to Point people to Jesus, what I'm doing now. I, I'm, I'm not sharing that to, to brag. I'm just sharing that even the impossible, if you have the right heart, could be used by the Lord. Kahit ano. Can you imagine that a song, a multinational American company would allow that song, that lyrics, to be the theme song of the biggest uh, gasoline campaign they did in five years? Posible sa atin. Pero sa Panginoon, walang imposible. Amen, right? Amen. And so let me, let, me, let me close with this. Let me end with this. It doesn't have to be a campaign like that on what the Lord is asking you to do. But He's asking you to do something in your workplace, in your career, in your jobs, in your business, in whatever you're doing. And you need to understand the sweet spot principle. Find that. Find that talent. What you're so passionate about, use that. Ano may experience mo? Ano may pagdadaanan mo? Ano may tinitrain ka na ayaw na ayaw mo? Tignan mo lahat yun. Tapos tignan mo yung passion mo. Tapos nasa gitna nun, sasabihin sa'yo ng Panginoon, Ikoy, ito gawin mo. An, ito gawin mo. John, ito gawin mo. Dominic, ito gawin mo. Eric, ito gawin mo. Johnny, ito gawin mo. Nasabihin niya yun. At pag nandun ka, nandun ka, at pag galaw mo ng ganun, walang ka-effort-effort, hindi ka mapapagod. Maraming pagod. Maraming pagod. Ang tayong pagod sa trabaho eh. Pagod kasi tayo, kasi iba yung perspective natin eh. Baguhin natin. Tingnan natin, ano ba Lord yung gusto mong gawin ko dito? And when you get that, when you experience that, where you are right now, and you experience that, this is what you want me to do, Lord. Wow! Whew! It's best feeling in the world. And then you will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Come! Enter into the joy of your master. I want to end with this video, and then we will pray. God formed man and breathed into him the breath of life. When the Israelites were trapped with their backs to the sea, Moses stretched out his staff and the waters were parted. Samson struck down a thousand oppressors of Israel with the jawbone of a donkey. At the 
blast of trumpets and a war cry, Joshua watched the walls of Jericho crumble. With torches and empty jars, Gideon and 300 men defeated an army of 100,000. David chose five smooth stones from the stream, and with them, he struck down Goliath. 5,000 were fed with only five loaves and two fish. If God can use such small things to change the course of history, certainly he can use you. With the Lord, nothing is impossible. Let's pray.